Hi, I'm Bob McDemus. I'm the Thermal Spray Guy. And today we're going to take a look at some Thermal Spray System comparisons. This is a brief overview and it's intended to be uh, just an overview. We're going to look at five systems. Combustion powder, combustion wire, electric arc, HVOF, high velocity oxygen fuel, and plasma. First one's combustion powder. We use oxygen and acetylene to create the combustion process to create the heat to melt the, the materials. The materials in this case will be from powder and we can use metals, alloys, suffusible coatings, ceramics, and carbides. It's an introductory system, it's less than $6,000 and it's a really great way to start in the thermal spray industry. The oxygen and acetylene go in the back of the unit through a valve core mixes the gas in the uh, siphon plug inside the gun, creates a flame, and we put powder into it. Powder is injected from a hopper that's mounted on top, and there is a uh, pinch valve that's controlled with the trigger. This is the powder jet 85 with the PPS2GF. That's the flow meters to control the oxygen and the acetylene flows. Both are important to the uh, control of your total process. Next one is combustion wire. Again, we use oxygen and acetylene. In this case, we're going to use a wire material to create the material to be melted and atomized for the thermal spray system. This is also an introductory system, less than $8,000, and it's a real workhorse. The oxygen and acetylene come in from underneath into the core, into the valve core where it is injected into the siphon plug where it's mixed and the combustion occurs outside the gun. Wire is injected from the back, goes through a uh, air driven turbine which controls the speed of the wire. It's the WireJet 96. The basic components are the WireJet 96 gun itself, the PPS2GF which is the flow meters, PPS2AF which is for air, air trail which controls the pressure of the air and it has coalescing filters to take care of water and uh, oil and the wire stand which helps uh, to handle the wire. Next is electric arc and in its name the electric arc is what generates the energy to melt the material and the material is supplied in the form of a wire. We do use some cord wires which means it's a hollow wire with powder inside and that gives us some flexibility for some different interesting alloys and new materials that we're now developing using the cord wires. This system is less than $25,000, though it's more expensive than the other two. It's a real workhorse in that it works for, for high volume applications and it's very easy to use. In this case we use two spools of wire that come together inside the gun and inside the gun the two wires come together where you strike an arc and that's where the energy occurs to create the melting of the two wires. Compressed air is used to atomize the material. The two wires, one comes here, there's a spool here, and then there's a spool over, over here. You really can't see it, but they come together inside the gun right here where the arc is struck and the material is melted and the compressed air atomizes the material. This is an AT400 twin wire electric arc system. On top there is the wire feed unit. That's the unit that controls the spool, two spools of wire and controls the feed of the wire to it. The rectifier is the, air, the uh, unit that's used to generate the energy to melt the wires and it all happens inside the arc gun where the melting occurs and atomization occurs. Next system is HVOF, high velocity oxygen fuel. It is the uh, system that's used as preferred for carbides and it uses propane and propylene, sometimes natural gas and oxygen to create the flame and that flame occurs inside the gun and uh, by occurring inside the gun the expanding gases come out of the gun at the very high velocity. You can see here that this is the front end of the gun it shows where this velocity is coming out and it exceeds the speed of sound so it's very loud and both the metal particles, or the uh, actually material particles, and the gases both exceed the speed of sound, so it makes it a very loud system. Fuel, oxygen, compressed air, and cooling water come in from the rear. This is the HIPAA jet system. 
The HippoJet system has the uh, HippoJet 2700 gun along with the uh, PF700 powder feeder and the control console. Last system is plasma. In this case, plasma is a system that uses an arc to take a diatomic gas, dissociate it, and after that dissociated gas leaves that arc, when it gets out in front, it wants to become a monoto uh, um, it becomes a monatomic gas in the arc and wants to become back to a diatomic gas outside of the arc, and that's where you get your your energy from is that energy given off from that transaction gives you the plasma flame. Here's a picture of where that arc's occurring. It's a very hot arc. It's in excess of 20,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Plasma gun is where it all happens. This is the AT3000 plasma spray system. And on the left hand side here you can see where the chiller is, which is the far left component. On the right side, upper right part of that picture is the control console which controls the gases and has a touch screen that controls the rest of the process. Near the rectifier and arc starter. On the right side is the SG100 plasma gun where the actual plasma gas is generated. Thanks a lot for joining us. You can see us at www.thermalspraydepot.com where you go into more detail on all these individual systems. Thanks, have a great day.